Hi guys, welcome to part 2 of the Pick and Assembly Language lecture series. In this lecture, we'll go through first in the Pick 16 f 877 data sheet, how to read the reference manual and make sure that you are briefed with the set of assembly language references that you can use in order to continue with this effort. In addition, uh, in a later part, perhaps in in the following videos, we'll be utilizing the Proteus simulator for our circuit simulation. We will first learn how to read the datasheet. Uh, tackle the features of the microcontroller, the memory and its registers, the clock source, and finally the instructions. So let's move on with the datasheet. Let me open the file. So in the reference folder, we check out on the datasheet from Microchip Corporation so here it is <laughs> let's first uh, open let's first open the device overview just to uh, refresh you with everything we are using PIC16 F877A because in this document there are other models of the same microcontroller but we'll be dealing specifically with PIC-16 F877A. So for F877A, here's the features. The op frequency is up to 20 megahertz, and the flash program memory is up to 8K with 14-bit words. And finally, uh, some of the more important parts that we have five ports A, B, C, D, and E. We have data memory of 368 bytes, EEPROM of 256 bytes, and 15 interrupts. So this is it. We have eight input channels for 10-bit ADC. And as you can see here, we have the same number of instructions for all the models. And to be more specific, we'll be utilizing the 40-pin PD package because once we get to the actual hardware, it's easier to work with without using advanced tools and manufacturing processes. So if we go down, we get to see the memory organization we'll base on figure 1-2 which has the 877A block diagram. As you can see here we have this is our working register and the ALU right here and the MOX. So the input multiplexer here plus the working register and we get the ALU. Uh, this will be uh, become obvious later on in the later parts of the video, but the output result can then go to port A to E, and as you can see here, the port E only has three pins, three ports, I mean three pins. A, a single port here has one, two, three, four, five, six pins. This one has eight RB0 to RB7. This one, so port C has eight pins, port D eight pins, port E has three. And so these are the more important parts here that uh, the the input for the ALU is from the multiplexer and the other one from the working register. So let's proceed and we go to 
the pinout description for the 877A. This is where the actual actual uh, pinnings are defined. As you can see, at pin 13 for the PDIP, which will which we will be using, that is the oscillator crystal or the external external clock input. So we'll just have to go through this. There are there are a lot of details here, and they are all rather important once we start working with code because everything will be based on the actual pin assignments. So next, uh, which is a very important part, is the memory organization. As you can see, I have not uh, made a PowerPoint for this or any other form of presentation because it is important that the the reader should know how to use the data sheet. This will uh, give you a brief overview on how to go through with the data sheet. So the memory organization is very important because in here for the 877A we can see that we have a program counter PC which is 12, uh, 13 bits and it's from 0 to 12 and we have a stock level of 1 to 8 and then the reset vector is at zero on chip program memory and we have this is another important thing we have four pages zero to page four so in addition to pages we have banks which ranges from zero to three and you can control them by uh, via setting the rp1 and rp0 so this is the for 877A the register map. So this is very important because this tells you which bank to find the a certain command or a certain address. For example, uh, for port A, if you need that, you need to go to bank zero at address zero five H that's it you just you can't you cannot directly go to 05h without changing the bank if you need trace a then you need to go to bank one and then find address 85 and if you need to go for example to uh, status I mean uh, trace B for example here Trace B, and uh, you need to go to bank four, uh, bank three at one eight six. So bank three. So these are just examples, and w you will be such concepts will be much appreciated later on when we do actual coding. And here are the SPFs or the special function registers. As you can see here, um, port A. We can only use bit 5 to bit 0. Port B, you can use bit 7 to bit 0. So that's it. That's, that's you need to you need to be aware of such things because you can find all of these details here. If you're wondering a certain code uh, does not work, you need to go back to the data sheet and compare notes with the data sheet. You compare your code with what is actually defined in the data sheet for the specific uh, model of processor you're using. Next we move on to the status register which is also important. That's it. Uh, the more important part here is the RP1 and RP0 which defines which bank you'll be using so that's it that's just uh, some important parts and the program counter is here you'll be as you can see you have already seen how it works from the previous video but we'll be dealing more with them later on let's let's keep data EEPROM for the moment let's go to IO ports and this is the, b the good part you will always have examples for some basic
concepts and she she know some people may be working with C or micro C but the examples in most data sheets are in uh, assembly language so this is for example how to initialize port A so there are examples here that you can actually follow for example BCF is a bit clear F then you need to change the status RP0 and that means that for the status register which I showed you a while ago and bit RP0 uh, BCF is being run there and it means that status that RPO is equal to 0 and RP1 is equal to 0 which means you are now at bank 0 because you're uh, putting 0 on both RP0 and RP1 then you need to clear F port A which means uh, for all pins at port A they are clearing it then status bit set that means you're setting the RP0 equals to 1 uh, set is just like let's turn on RP0 which means status that RP0 is now 1 and then move the value 0x06 which means uh, 6 to the working register which is uh, this one move and then move the whatever ins inside the working register to add gun 1 so it's essentially just saying add gun 1 is equal to 6 which initializes all pins as digital inputs and then value use initial. then move CF to LW CF you can convert that to binary and you can see it is 8 bits it that, that, that 8 bit value is moved to the working register again so this we would expect that this zero zero 06 would be overwritten it will be replaced with CF and then move whatever is in the working directory to trace A that's just it it's very simple it's just like saying Chris A is equal to 0xcf but since we're using assembly language not that it's not that uh, simple a syntax and you need to write it in two lines move the value to the working register and then move whatever is in the working register to your final destination so that, that's just the basic so why am I showing you this again because it's very important that you guys have an idea that everything most of the concepts and the specifics are in the datasheet uh, let's skip for the timers for the moment and let's proceed to the instruction set summary this is a bit important so th you need you before we go on you I highly advise you read this entire datasheet at least those that I have uh, that I've explained to you those sections because some of these are rather advanced for example the A to D the compar right comparator and the has uh, special features they're, 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 they're a bit advanced so I highly suggest that you read those I have explained because there you will be needing them even in the most simple cases even in the most simple programs that you'll be working with so in the instruction set summary there are byte oriented operations bit oriented operations and literal and control operations Th those are just keywords there but it actually really helps if you if you read this so let's move on to the actual extra instruction set this is very important for the byte oriented file register operations you can see here these are the add WF so you you actually already have a value at F and then the D so that's just it whatever is in W it it will add it with what's F so prior to doing this W must have a content and in order to put a content to the W you need to use the previous command that we used earlier which was where, where, where was that 
Um, okay, here is the instruction descriptions. So W plus F goes to destination, which is D, status affected. Uh, this is the status register. It's C, D, C, and Z. C is carry and Z is zero. Uh, that's it. If the the answer to the addition operation is zero, then Z would be one. If the answer to the addition operation has a carry value, then C status dot C would be one, else zero. So description you can read it here. If D is one, result is stored back in register F. So that's if D is one. So that's a very nice. That the, this is usually done with, for example, in commands. Uh, C is equal to C plus uh, plus one. So essentially, you would need to set the D to one so that the answer would go back to C. You'd, that's just a very simple example. I mean, the D is either zero or one. So. That's it. And F would be zero to one to seven. So that's it. It's W plus F. So you, you just need to read this. So So everything is explained here. And Let's just go back right here to I.O. ports. Move L.W. Let's find the explanation for that. Okay. There you go. Move L.W. Move literal to W. So that is a literal and control operation. Move the whatever it is that is K and move that to the W which is the working register. So going back to the diagram right here with uh, in this block diagram. So let's just uh, put it in our mind that whatever it is that is going on with the ALU it comes from the W register. So if you want to do something arithmetic because ALU is by the way is arithmetic logic unit. It's one part the working register the other part comes from the MOX so you can see the answer can go back to the working register so this is it this diagram is very helpful in case you're confused so go back to this so this ends the first part of episode 2 in this lecture series I hope you guys read the documents and I hope you also watch the other videos on my channel you might be interested in other subjects and have a great day.